he referred to and quoted and sanitized a whole bunch of research funded by a little known organization called the Pioneer Fund. Now, the Pioneer Fund is a neo-Nazi scientific foundation that was set up in the late 1930s explicitly to do things like promote the idea that African Americans should be repatriated back to Africa. So recently, a report was published by the Conservative Party into Islamophobia in the party. This report concluded that there was no evidence of institutionalized Islamophobia, but it did find considerable evidence that there were many, many cases of actual Islamophobia and that the party had failed in many different ways to actually do something about it. Obviously, whenever we have an incident of uh, anti-Semitism uh, or Islamophobia or whatever in the Conservative Party, we take a zero-tolerance approach. And what was interesting about the report was this disjuncture between institutionalised Islamophobia and the idea that there was quite considerable overt Islamophobia. The fact is, is that the report did conclude that many processes in the party had failed, there were failures to deal with complaints, there were failures to investigate, and yet somehow the report consistently insisted that there was no evidence of a kind of a structural or institutional problem. So really the report in a sense kind of refuted itself. Its own data shows that there were issues with the Conservative Party as an institution. This should not come as a surprise to anybody because we've had over the last few years a consistent pattern of the Conservative-led government appointing people to different positions who happen to hold anti-Muslim or anti-minority views. When I'm speaking to someone and I want to see their reaction to my actions and my words, you look at their face, there's millions of years of human evolution in judging people's reactions from their faces. And obviously with that, without that feedback, the conversation is very difficult because that's what we're used to. OK, I'm just going to have to ask you that again. You feel uncomfortable having a conversation with a woman who is wearing a burqa? With, not, 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 with anyone with their face covered, yes, I do. One of the most recent people who've been appointed by this government is Robin Simcox, who has taken up the post of interim commissioner at the government agency known as the Commission for Countering Extremism. This commission is supposed to be working on the government's counter-extremism policy. It's an independent agency, but it's set up by the government and it's set up to advise the government and it will feed into policy. Now the problem is, is that Robin Simcox is someone who in his past, very recently, has had all sorts of affiliations to far-right and extreme-right organisations. Very recently, I wrote about how he had spoken during his term at the Heritage Foundation, which is another right-wing think tank very close to the Trump administration in the United States. And during this time, he had spoken at a notorious hate group called the Center for Immigration Studies. Now, the Center for Immigration Studies, or, or the CIS, as it's abbreviated, is well known in the United States for being associated with white nationalist and white supremacist ideology. Now, someone like Simcox affiliating with an organization like the CIS is quite extraordinary because it's essentially an extremist far-right hate group. And yet we have someone like Simcox, who is now supposed to be, you know, kind of an expert in dealing with far-right extremism and is being promoted by the British government into a position where he will now be advising the government on how to deal with extremists and extremist organisations. Another figure who we know has had a lot of kind of social influence on Conservative Party thinking is Toby Young. Of course, he's not had um, kind of an official big government appointment, but he was appointed a few years ago to the Office of Students. We know that he has certain affinities with people who are making those kind of decisions and we know that he has a lot of influence in kind of the more kind of extreme right end of the Conservative Party. Now Toby Young runs the Free Speech Union which is an advocacy group which says that it's all about trying to promote free speech and defend people's right to say what they want to say legitimately. But what many people don't realise is that Toby Young is also very, very fascinated by scientific racism. 
And as I reported a few years ago, he had given a speech at a well-known uh, conference which focuses on um, the intersections of scientific racism and intelligence. During this speech, he referred to and quoted and sanitized a whole bunch of research funded by a little known organization called the Pioneer Fund. Now, the Pioneer Fund is a neo-Nazi scientific foundation that was set up in the late 1930s explicitly to do things like promote the idea that African Americans should be repatriated back to Africa. And they were openly um, kind of sympathetic to Nazi ideology at that time and openly promoted uh, ideas around eugenics and that kind of thing. Now, Toby Young's affinity to these kinds of ideas, you know, frequently quoting um, authors and academics and scientists affiliated with scientific racism who openly say that they believe that black people um, are genetically inferior in intelligence. Of course, one of the most prominent people in Boris Johnson's government was Dominic Cummings, his chief advisor and the mastermind of the Vote Leave campaign. Now, Dominic Cummings has a track record of fascination with eugenics too. He's well known for having written a dossier for his former boss as education secretary, Michael Gove, where he advocated essentially the idea of genetics and IQ being factored into education in schools. And when he put forward these ideas, he also quoted well-known eugenicists who have sympathized with scientific racism. Dominic Cummings more recently appointed a person called Andrew Sabisky as a number 10 advisor. And Andrew Sabisky was also known and outed to have promoted insidious views about scientific racism and the inferiority of black people due to genetics when it comes to IQ and other measures of performance. Cummings' new hire appeared to have been an avid reader of Mr. Cummings' blog. In 2014, a man called Andrew Sabisky commented, there are excellent reasons to think the very real racial differences in intelligence are significantly, even mostly, genetic in origin. I think that what this suggests is that particularly in relation to the Conservative Party, there's been a concerted effort by elements of the alt-right and far-right to disfigure mainstream thinking around cohesion, minorities, democracy, and how we should all live together. And this is very, very worrying. Because as we see more and more people in government and around government becoming sympathetic to these kinds of views, it demonstrates the success of these fringe extremist groups in attempting to actually influence mainstream discourse within the center. So the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Yeah. And that can result in these fundamental changes to policy. And we've seen this already with the publication of the infamous race report by this government which attempted to downplay institutional racism and essentially tried to essentially kind of look away at the idea of that race and racism are continued kind of problems in British society. And this is a very dangerous trajectory because where it ends up is the normalization of hateful views towards minorities and the normalization of white nationalist and white supremacist views and the idea that it's okay to be hateful and suspicious of people that we're not familiar with. And one of the results of this we can see that's quite disturbing is the fact that we've had a recent meeting between our Prime Minister Boris Johnson and Viktor Orban, the President of Hungary. And Viktor Orban is very well known for his anti-Semitic views, his promotion of anti-Muslim bigotry, his promotion of bigotry towards all minorities, his attacks on LGBTQ plus rights, and all sorts of uh, crackdowns on minority groups. This focus on the use of free speech to defend these sorts of ideas around white nationalism are actually very insidious attempts to justify attacks on real free speech of minorities to simply be who they are. And the fact that our Prime Minister is welcoming someone like this and giving them a platform is a very, very alarming indication of the extent to which we are seeing this sort of creeping fascism become normalized. Thanks so much for watching Byline TV. 
We need your support to continue exposing these sorts of disastrous trends and to be able to inform you about what's really happening in the world. To support us, please follow the links below.